Yep. So the first question is, regarding the work you do with communities, can you tell us of a time ICWA has been beneficial for families? Every time. Uh, you know, uh, ICWA does two very important things. Uh, it sets up criteria that states or counties have to follow when they take a, an Indian child into custody and um, lots of issues there around eligibility, but uh, just simply stated that um, that's one portion of ICWA. Another portion of ICWA that is less talked about is the empowerment or the recognition of for tribes to run their own child welfare programs. And while tribes always had the sovereign right to protect their own children, uh, to uh, deal with custody issues, um, to, uh, to perform child welfare, there really were no mechanisms in place for that to happen formally before ICWA. Um, so ICWA re recognized the tribal courts had the full authority to handle child welfare. Um, ICWA recognized that tribes had the uh, their child welfare programs um, had the full and equal authority to state and county programs that the, that the tribes could make the decisions about what to operate and not operate with regard to child welfare. So anytime we go into ch to community and we're working with uh, tribal child welfare programs, um, they're there because the Indian Child Welfare Act recognized the tribal rights and authority to run child welfare and began to fund programs with a small amount core funding. And uh, as an organization, one of the things that we've done is continue to add uh, to the resources that tribes have to, to run their own child welfare programs. In addition to that, I think um, the the side of ICWA that has to do with what states have to do, um, we frequently see in communities that we work with um, or instances where families or children have been placed with relatives have come back to the reservation or, uh, or they may live there uh, or nearby. And so um, the, the benefits of relative placement, the benefits that are associated with the active efforts to try to prevent removal, those all may be operating as well um, in the communities that we, that we go to. Thank you. Um, and so how can we continue to take action for ICWA today? Well, um, one of the things that this advocacy that we've done over the years on ICWA has taught me is that uh, we have to remember our ancestors and our elders and the fact that the reason that we're even here today is they were constant and vigilant in their advocacy for sovereignty and for tribal rights, for treaty rights. Um, anytime you don't actively engage to hold on to rights, the colonial structure of, the, uh, of this country will diminish those rights to the extent that uh, they can intrude and continue to take the things that colonial powers take. You know, it's the, we, and you, all you have to do is look at the cases involving um, native people that come before the Supreme Court. Um, there's the cases that come before the court ha, ha, are in, usually there because of intrusions on land, natural resources, uh, governance, um, sovereignty, uh, and children. And um, so somebody's always continuing to try to take uh, the rights that we have as, as uh, American Indian and Alaska Native people. So we have to be vigilant every day uh, to hold back uh, those that make the assumption that 
we don't need those rights anymore or their rights are more important than our rights. Thank you. And so how does ICWA still benefit families today? Well, all of the ways that I mentioned, uh, um, it is, uh, it's a living law. It's not, it, it will never lose its relevance so long as uh, families struggle. Um, we, we wish that uh, every Native family had uh, this had strengths to not have to have um, child welfare intervene in their lives. Um, but given the historical trauma, um, the, um, the the adverse childhood experiences that have that contribute to struggles with mental health issues or substance abuse issues. Um, you know, poverty, um, lack of housing, lack of education, all of those uh, issues contribute to situations where children are not receiving the care uh, that they should be receiving, whether that's uh, neglect or abuse. And um, this is, um, it's essential that we continue the work on those areas. Now, I should also say that I think one of the, the most important contributions uh, of NICWA as an organization has been to try to move the uh, intervention, um, child welfare intervention with families much more to the front end uh, um, of that, that need so that we're really uh, trying to create systems, help tribes create systems that are oriented towards healing families and building capacity and not waiting for bruises or abandonment uh, to happen before families get help and to not use child welfare as a mechanism that continues to perpetrate trauma on children by unnecessary removals or um, intervening only after things have gotten terribly serious. So where we see ICWA doing the most good uh, is that um, where tribes are using their sovereignty to help their families uh, heal and for kids to grow up healthy and strong, just like our, our uh, vision statement at NICWA says, it's a, it's a, this is essential for the continued uh, well-being and survival uh, of our tribal peoples here in this continent. Thank you. And finally, are there any unique questions or things about ICWA that you haven't <clears throat> talked about or addressed in a NICWA platform? Well, um, uh, I talk about these issues a lot, and I think that um, part of uh, what um, we try to do is to raise the consciousness of um, state and county workers, uh, supervisors, directors, managers, and leaders um, to express um, and, and help them uh, understand the, um, the biases that are built into the child welfare system. So the, um, we're seeing in the country around us um, a tremendous um, self-examination about um, the hierarchy of human value. Uh, that's a term that we learned with the Kellogg Foundation and, um, and the racial healing work that Nick was done um, with the help of Kellogg Foundation. And the, um, the idea that somehow Western linear uh, American thought is... Um, superior, stronger, better 
then our indigenous ways of knowing seems to um, play out in child welfare as if somehow we're not quite human. And because um, I'll give you an example. Um, tribal governments cannot prosecute non-native people for child sexual abuse on the reservation. The, um, in, in what world is that okay? Um, it's just, I, you can't name another community in this nation that cannot prosecute, I'm sorry. So I was talking about um, the, uh, the um, prohibition under law that tribes can't prosecute a non-native. And that was true for domestic violence until very recently. And in most places, it's still true. Um, but just imagine what, what uh, county, for example, what jurisdiction in the United States would accept that somehow only the federal government uh, ha would have the authority to prosecute uh, an offender in their community. And the failure of the federal government to do that would mean that perpetrators would walk the street, that as a matter of fact, perpetrators would move to tribal communities because it's places where they can perpetrate without consequence. Uh, and that's been true in the past. That's, to me, that's inhuman. And in order for that per to persist, someone has to believe that we're racially, culturally inferior and, made, and not quite human. Uh, when it, on, the, on the floor of the House of Representatives, when the tribal authority under VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act, was being discussed and the tribal authority to prosecute domestic violence was being discussed. A representative stood up and said a white man could not possibly get a fair trial in an Indian court. Think about the, what the implications of that statement is. Didn't for a second even consider that an Indian could get a fair trial in a white court. Um, so as we do this work, as we stand up for the sovereign rights of tribes, as we uphold the rights of families and uh, courts through ICWA, we're standing up for our very existence, for our very um, right to be fully human and to have our uh, our existence valued and to reject this historically appalling notion that there is a hierarchy of human value where we're at the bottom of the barrel. So yeah, that's, um, we have to continue to talk about that. I think in the conversation that's currently going on in the, the world around us, around racial, uh, social justice, that we have to um, add, uh, be part of that conversation, be in alliance with other people of color, um, to have our unique issues uh, recognized for our sovereignty and our governance, um, and at the same time, stand with others to reject this notion that some groups are better than others.